Good morning. So this is lesson one, uh, day three. And so you're going to look at a short story today that was written by Gabrielle Waugh. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but I, I think that's the French pronunciation of R-O-Y. Uh, she was born in March 22nd, 1909. <clears throat> so a little bit before the First World War and she passed away in 1983. And she was a French Canadian author. <clears throat> she was born in St. Boniface, which is now part of Winnipeg. And uh, she was educated at St. Joseph's Academy after she trained as a teacher at the Winnipeg Normal School. And that's kind of what they were called at that point in time. Um, my mom was a teacher and that's where she trained was at the normal school in Edmonton. And so uh, Gabrielle taught at rural schools in Marchand and Cardinal, and then was appointed to Provence, Provencher School in St. Boniface. I may be butchering that. <clears throat> so she's considered to be one of the most important uh, Canadian Francophone writers in our history and an influential Canadian author. So, and that's all from Wikipedia, so you can look that up, and I don't think there's more there, but um, anyway. So, you're going to choose to read one of her stories. You don't have to read both of them. You're welcome to, if you want to, but one is called The Story of Nil, and the other one is The Dead Child, and they're both in the, on the Lesson 1 page. So if you choose to read The Story of Nil, go ahead and read it right now, and then move on to part two. If you're going to read The Dead Child, um, move on to part two and then and read it. So whichever story you choose, just answer the questions in the assignment that pertain to that story. And I'm just trying to remember, I read these earlier in the summer to prepare for this course. And um, I think The Dead Child struck me more so than the story of Nell, just because I guess I'm a teacher and um, it had to do with the teaching experience that she had. So <clears throat> writers often write about they know and that's she was writing about an experience that she had as a teacher. So pay attention to the details in the story that help to tell you about the setting. All right, so that's all for part one and we'll go on to part two. Um, so part two <clears throat> is looking at elements of a short story. So theme, so theme is a central idea of a work and it's usually implied rather than stated. <clears throat> and it gives meaning to the story underlying its contents and giving significance. Okay. Now, what I find is that students um, often want to say the theme is justice or loneliness. Don't do that. <laughs> so you need to come up with a statement. <clears throat> Maybe the theme is about justice or about loneliness, but what is it about loneliness or what is it about justice that the author is trying to communicate. So be aware that it's more than just a word or a concept um, or an idea that you can state in one word. It's, it needs to be a little more developed than that. So it's often stated as a truth about mankind, human nature, or life as the author sees it. So we may not see life that way, but we should be able to recognize what literature is presenting as true. So it's that's kind of their truth, right? So it's off, also possible to see several themes in, a, in the same piece of literature. So as I've said, you should be able to state it in one sentence and it shouldn't perhaps be too specific. Be careful not to state it as a moral or a lesson or a recommendation as to how to act. So that's important. Theme is not a lesson. So it's not like a fable where you have a moral to it. 
<clears throat> so it needs to be stated as a declarative statement, making an observation or generalization about life. Do not state theme as an imperative, like it's something the author wants you to do. Okay, so it's just how they observe life um, or um, a truth about either people or human nature <clears throat> or uh, life as the author sees it. So not all stories have necessarily worthwhile themes. Some of them are written purely for ent entertainment. So either to scare you, surprise you, or make you laugh. So don't look for a serious theme in everything you read. But most stories you're gonna read in high school literature or English classes or, or university classes are chosen because they are quality stories that do have something to say and they will have themes. So a topic is sort of what we were talking about earlier. So it's a one word uh, summation. So a story might be about friendship. So friendship is the topic, but what does it say about friendship? And that's where we get to our theme. <clears throat> Moving on to setting. So setting is the time, place, occupations, conditions. Um, when the curtain rises in a play, we see the setting of the scene of the play. In a short story, although important features of the background or setting are pictured near the beginning, details are often presented as the story progresses. So um, typically long paragraphs of description will, will slow up the story and confuse the reader. So it's better to have brief, vivid descriptions that help the reader visualize the action as it moves along. Time is the day, uh, time of day, the month, the year, the era. So it, time includes a, a variety of things there. Place includes the specific setting, also the province or the country, because those things will give you clues to what was going on. So even the fact that we know that Gabriel Wa was born in 1908 and you know, became a teacher and lived until 1983 makes a difference because we know kind of the era in Canadian history that she was growing up in. And so it's always wise to pay attention in social studies class, which I've been a social studies teacher too. So <clears throat> pay attention because those kinds of things are, are, are wise to know and they will help you in literature. Point of view. So before writing a first word of a story, the writer must decide whose story it is and who should tell it. <clears throat> so the common narrators are a major, minor, or a silent character who tells the story in first person. The author who tells the story objectively and the author who looks over the shoulder of the main character and tells the story from that person's point of view. So how the author decides to tell the story is point of view. And there are four main types of point of view. First person, <clears throat> so that is from the point of view of one character and they use the use I, I this, I that. Omniscient is when the, the narrator knows all the thoughts and feelings of all the characters. Limited omniscient is the narrator knows the thoughts and feelings of just one or two characters. An objective is the narrator stands back and just describes what is seen. So we don't know the feelings of any of the characters. <clears throat> so point of view style and all the things that help develop tone work together to create what is called narrative manner. So style, the language, the mood, the action, scene symbols, time could be flashbacks, present tense or future tense, distance, what is the reader's closeness to the story? Um, in some stories, we're brought close to the action so that we feel like we're right there. In others, we feel like a spectator. Dialogue is the characters talking to each other. <clears throat> some stories use a lot, other stories use a little. Dialogue is hard to write and no conversation at all is preferable to stilted on natural talk that does not fit the characters. Similarly, conversation that does not serve a purpose to characterize or to advance the plot should be barred from the story. 
To learn to write dialogue well, you must get out among people, come to know them, and observe carefully the details of their speech. Coherence, point, accuracy, length of sentences, type of sentences, fluency, vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, tone, and mannerisms. And so often you'll have in a certain era, there might be different language used. It might be more formal a um, hundred years ago than it is today. Remember to punctuate dialogue correctly when you write it. Okay, so then um, if you haven't, if you read, uh, I can't remember which one was first, the story of Nail, I think. So if you've read, if you haven't read a story yet, read The Dead Child. <clears throat> and finish the questions on the assignment document. Now, a good idea is to make notes of the terms you study in each lesson. So you could make study cards or print off terms and their definitions from each lesson to help you learn them and study for your tests. And most of the terms are highlighted in red for you. All right. That's all for day three, which is quite a bit.